As a law enforcement officer, I attest that my fundamental duty is to serve mankind, to safeguard lives and property, to protect the innocent against deception, the weak against oppression or intimidation, and the peaceful against violence or disorder, and to respect the constitutional rights of all persons to ensure liberty, equality, and justice. Welcome to Gainesville PD On Duty, where we take you behind the badge of the Gainesville Police Department. My name is Officer Ben Tobias, and I'm the spokesperson for the agency. Each month, I invite a different officer to join me in the studio so you can meet different members of the agency. This month, I have Sergeant Rob Finelli joining me in the studio. Welcome, Rob. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do here at the police department. Well, Ben, I've been with GBD since 2003, and I'm currently a supervisor in our Special Operations Unit, or SOU. Our primary focus is investigating both residential and vehicle burglaries. We accomplish that with a mix of uniform patrol, covert operations, and investigation work, all from inside our unit. Thanks, Rob. Glad you could join us today. On today's episode, we will share three very different topics with you. We will introduce you to our new second in command, talk about how GPD works with mental health patients in crisis, and finish the episode with a new concept that will hopefully help prevent burglaries, something that I know Sergeant Finale's unit will appreciate. 2016 has been full of change inside the Gainesville Police Department. In January of this year, Chief Jones announced a reorganization of the agency. During some of those changes, Major Rick Hanna decided that it was a good time to bring his 36-year career to a close. Major Hanna recently retired and left the agency, and we thank him for his dedicated 36 years of service to our community. His retirement left an opening for a new second in command, and Terry Pierce from Montgomery County, Maryland was chosen to fill the role. I recently sat down with Major Pierce to get to know him a little bit better. Let's hear from him and learn his hopes for the Gainesville community. Well, I began in law enforcement in 1990 in Montgomery County, Maryland. It was a community I had grown up in. I was educated there, met my wife there, and just was the place I wanted to work. Times had changed though. In 1990, I was actually in the private sector for a considerable period of time before then. And as a result of things in the economy, I found myself looking for a job and Montgomery County Police Department was hiring at the time. It was a great opportunity, a great community, and it was the opportunity for me to return everything that I had gained from the community to the community. And I know a lot of times it sounds cliche, but it is actually the reason I did get into law enforcement. The memorable moment in my career that really sticks out, uh, the milepost, if you will, was the DC sniper. Uh, the DC sniper took place in Montgomery County, Maryland. There were eight victims that died in Montgomery County. It was a game changer. The way the police department interacted with the community, the way the community interacted with the police department, the way people thought of public safety, everything changed. Just going to the gas station, filling your car up with gas, was not routine anymore. And people understood that the police were actually there to help keep them safe. I realized I could make more of an impact, a positive impact on the community by being an administrator, being an executive on the police department. And I had that opportunity with my previous department to really get out there and make changes, positive changes that assisted with the community, lowered crime, and improved the relationship with the police department, the police officers, and the community. And I researched community policing. I took it upon myself to get to as many conferences as I could on community policing. It really broadened my understanding of the interaction and what can be done to improve the community and the relationship with the police department and to help not only public safety, but just the quality of life. I became a lecturer on it at the American University in Washington, D.C. I then presented the community policing concept for other agencies in the United States later on in my career and had the opportunity to teach at the FBI's International Law Enforcement Academy in Budapest, Hungary, to the former Soviet bloc countries, their police executives, on community policing. And I've just been able to build on that. And then you try to implement that in your local community and try and work with everyone at every level to get them to understand that this is a way of life. This is how we do things here as a police department. And here in Gainesville, that's how Chief Jones has been doing things, and that's how Chief Jones and the Gainesville Police Department will continue to do things, to be out there in the, in the community, to really, really be proactive and just build on what we have. I tell officers, call me, no matter what time. If it's a call that requires some more 
management that actually you have the skill set to do. And I'm there to make decisions that on the scene that in the past, they may have had to make a phone call in the weeks I've been here. I think people become more comfortable with me showing up at a scene, realizing that I'm here to help. I'm not here to, to order people around or to find fault with how they're doing things, which I know a lot of organizations, when upper management arrives on the scene, they get the idea that they're only here to catch me doing something wrong. That's not why I'm here. I'm here to get things done right. My hope is that every member of this community, every member from the youngest to the oldest, to the richest to the poorest, understand that we're here together. What's been your favorite assignment so far, ever, in police? Work? Wow, my favorite, my favorite police assignment, and my kids are going to love this one because they're going, they're already answering this. By the way, was being a bicycle officer as a part of a community policing team. We just had so much fun and just great interaction with the community. People outside their store were sweeping the sidewalk or something, and they'd wave and say, "Hey, Terry, how you doing?" And you, you looked at that and said, I am part of this community. Fantastic, made a big impact on me and I loved it. Uh, I'll be putting on a bike uniform here in Gainesville as well and I will be riding a bicycle in the downtown area. That's a guarantee. My dad taught me that how you treat people is how people are gonna treat you and it's true. So I learned that when people thank me when I give them a ticket, I did my job right. And that was my goal, to always treat people with respect. It's what I do. And it's a passion because I have a family. I know what it's like when your family is impacted by crime. And if you treat every victim of crime that it was a relative of yours, give them that respect that they deserve. Be compassionate and learn what can we do to just make your community a little bit better, a little bit safer, a little bit nicer to be in. That you don't have to worry about having your kids go out at night or out to play on the weekend or whatever and be in fear that something's going to happen to them. That is my passion. That's what drives me to come to work every day and make a difference on this job. Major Pierce brings a wealth of training and experience to us here in the Gainesville area. We hope that his fresh perspective will help GPD be the best agency we possibly can. After the break, we'll tell you about GPD's efforts with crisis intervention team training and how it helps officers understand folks in crisis. Stay with us. Gainesville PD on duty will be right back. Burglars and robberies have become serious concerns in our city. This crime is referred to as a crime of opportunity because most criminals look for the path of least resistance. Protect yourself, don't become a target, lock your doors, and keep expensive items out of plain view. For crime prevention information, go to GainesvillePD.org or call the Gainesville Police Department's Crime Prevention Office at 334-2479. Protect yourself, don't become a target. I will maintain courageous calm in the face of danger, scorn, or ridicule. Develop self-restraint and be constantly mindful of the welfare of others. Honest in thought and deed in both my personal and official life, I will be exemplary in obeying the laws of the land and the regulations of my department. Together, as a community, we foster order, safety, and freedom. Welcome back to Gainesville PD On Duty. In today's society, it seems that police officers are encountering more and more people who are in crisis. These crises may be the result of mental disorders or simply someone just reaching a breaking point in their lives. Police officers receive basic training in recognizing folks in crisis, but we can all agree that more should be done. GPD has embraced the concept of crisis intervention team training for many years. This is specialized training that shows officers how to effectively handle people that are experiencing a crisis. Let's learn more about what GPD is doing to help improve interactions between these people and police. Based on the statements that he made and the fact that he had consumed 11 can dusting canisters within a 24-hour period um, and advised that he wanted to commit suicide or that his purpose behind doing that is because he wanted to die, um, we were able to Baker Act him and hopefully get him some help. So we took him to the nearest receiving facility and hopefully um, he'll spend some time there and be able to talk to the counselor and get back on the right track. There's oftentimes a component of a mental health issue underlying to so much of what we do. We responded to a call earlier in the evening, um, reference to a concerned father about his son, uh, who's an adult and you know suffering some sort of mental illness, and 
just basically the concern of, regarding some paranoia statements that he made. And uh, right now we're checking locations that he may be at because he's not from the area. And we just want to make sure he's okay and evaluate him for his well-being. He thinks that dad put spiders to kill his mom to get insurance and that he's cheating with his secretary. So. My name is Whitney Stout and I'm a lieutenant here with the Gainesville Police Department and I became involved in CIT when we first brought it to the community and, and my involvement started in 2004. So I'm Laurel Nesbitt, I'm the Outreach Coordinator at the Alachua County Crisis Center um, and in that role I act as the CIT Coordinator for the North Central Florida Steering Committee of CIT and Crisis Intervention Team Training uh, has been around in Alachua County for about 10 years. Um, the original team went to Memphis and got training from Major Sam Cochran, who was one of the developers of the model. When I went to Memphis, I was a little skeptical, even going through the training, I was still a little skeptical. You know, mental health and law enforcement, we come from very different worlds. And really, it didn't take long at all before we realized we had common goals. The main goal of CIT is to give law enforcement officers some alternative tools in dealing with people who they encounter who are having emotional crises or who are having symptoms of mental illness. Um, and so rather than taking them to jail, CIT gives them the tool set to go a different way, um, to get them the treatment they need or to de-escalate them emotionally and hook them up with whatever resources in the community are appropriate for them. We offer four 40-hour classes for law enforcement every year, and we also offer four 16-hour classes for 911 call takers um, and dispatch uh, workers. Um, so we're working with lots of law enforcement, lots of parts of the law enforcement community. And my role is really to coordinate getting those classes together. So our instructors for the law enforcement classes, they're professors at UF, they are law enforcement officers who've been doing CIT for years, they are mental health professionals, um, and we also use our crisis center volunteers to come in and do scenarios with the law enforcement officers. And that gives the officers in the class a really great opportunity to put their skills that they've been learning all week into use and into practice and they get immediate feedback um, on sort of how they're doing and how, they're, and how that's working. Because they don't get it, right? They don't get what we're going through. They don't get what I'm dealing with. They don't get what my friends are dealing with. They don't get what my family has to put up with. Bad. I can tell you're furious. The focus of the role play and the focus of the scenario in CIT is the emotional experience, right? And so that requires the volunteers to dig pretty deep sometimes and to get to a level of empathy that is pretty intense um, and vulnerable. Um, I have had volunteers in the past that after role plays, they come to me and they're like, I need to, I need to debrief a little bit. That was that brought up a lot of real emotion. That brought up a lot of real experience for them. And I'm continually impressed with the volunteers at the crisis center. Um, they are extraordinary people. <laughs> yeah, I'm very proud of them. The the change becomes in police work. The crisis sometimes can be very very um, intense, and it can be very real, uh, and it can actually be very dangerous. And that's where, where CIT has sort of a different spin. And that's really the experience that we want the officers to have in the program, to see how powerful that sort of paraphrasing, reflective listening, rapport building, how powerful of a tool that really is. We all as human beings need someone sometimes to listen to us. And we need to just uh, to be heard. And we need someone to understand our feelings. And, um, and that includes our family members, our friends, uh, our colleagues, and I think, you know, that we can all uh, be better listeners and have more empathy in, in every aspect of our lives. And it does, it makes us relate better as human beings. That helps us to build trust and help to, helps us to build relationships. And maybe we build them one at a time by uh, doing that, that diversion, by getting somebody help instead of taking them to jail. I think another really important consideration is the overall fiscal consideration. I mean, uh, jail costs money. Jail costs the taxpayers money. And if we can do something that, you know, get somebody and spend nickels instead of dollars in trying to get somebody um, a real basic level of help and care um, and really diffuse that crisis without having to have an emergency response that, that again, maybe it's the jail, but maybe it's also an emergency medical response or an emergency psychiatric admission. Those things are, are much more expensive to the taxpayers than maybe just a little bit of community-based care that we can hopefully get someone diverted to. 
uh, through all of our efforts. All our comm center, our communication center, the combined communication center goes through uh, a specialized, kind of abbreviated CIT training themselves. So they all have a knowledge of who we are and what we do. I think also here locally, there's almost always going to be a CIT officer available to respond when requested. So please make that request and we'll do everything we can to get a CIT officer to you. It's essential for enhancing the safety of the community and the officers. It's not always an option. I mean, sometimes the situation is what it is and we're forced to use force and we're forced to take someone to jail. Um, but again, when those options are available, I'm absolutely pleased and proud that the officers are using these skills. And the skills are developed. As the officers use them, they become better. I mean, you can, you can be that, that novice CIT officer and you kind of stumble a little bit through those conversations. But really, it's, it's also pleasing for me to see these officers who've been using it for two or three years who develop those skills and it becomes so natural and they really become, they really become very good at it. Police officers have to talk to people all day long. It's a huge part of their job. Um, and so whether they're beginners or whether they're really experienced officers on the street, um, everybody has their own style of communicating. Everybody has their own style of talking. Um, and one of the things that I love about doing the classes and the program is that seeing everyone, no matter where they're coming in, everyone by the end of the week has grown. Everyone by the end of the week has learned new communication and de-escalation skills. Um, and to see that from Monday to Friday is really a pretty amazing thing. Um, and I end those weeks exhausted, but also knowing that these, these officers are going out into the street and they're going to make, it's going to change the way that they interact with the community. Um, and that's a really powerful thing. We routinely have folks come, and sometimes it's great when they can come speak at a CIT class, um, who say that this made all the difference for them. Who having a CIT trained officer or call taker um, or deputy, that made all of the difference in their experience, and it put them on a track to um, wellness and improvement rather than relapse or uh, you know a worse outcome. If in a class of 24 students, right, 24 officers, even if one leaves and that changes an interaction they have with a member of the public for the better, I feel like I, I've done good work that day. <laughs> um, yeah, I get really, it's very, I get very passionate about it. GPD currently has quite a few of our officers that have received this specialized training. Their experience has proved itself countless times, and we hope that our understanding of people in crisis will keep increasing as more of our officers receive this valuable training. When we come back, we'll show you how we are thinking outside the box a bit with a new crime reduction initiative. Angel PD on duty. We'll be right back. So you're cruising down the road and all of a sudden you spot flashing lights up ahead. Some sort of emergency vehicle. Maybe a cop car, maybe an ambulance, maybe a tow truck is stopped on the side of the road with its flashing lights on. What do you do? If you answer, just keep right on going. Eh, wrong. Sorry, try again. When an emergency vehicle or tow truck is stopped on the roadside with its lights flashing, it's your job to move over or slow down 20 miles per hour below the speed limit. That's right, move over and give them some room or slow down if you just can't change lanes. That is unless you like paying tickets because that's just what you'll get, a big, fat ticket. So here's the deal. Keep your eyes on the road at all times and watch the road up ahead, not just what's right in front of your hood. Anytime you see an emergency vehicle or tow truck on the side of the road, move over a lane or slow down to 20 miles per hour below the speed limit. Give them the space they need to do their job safely. Hey, these folks are looking out for you, so look out for them too, will you? Move over, Florida. It's the law. A message from the Florida Highway Patrol, paid for by the Florida Department of Transportation. I will never act officiously or permit personal feelings, prejudices, animosities, or friendships to influence my decisions. With no compromise for crime and with relentless prosecution of criminals, I will enforce the law courteously and appropriately, without fear or favor, malice or ill will, and never employing unnecessary force. Welcome back to Gainesville PD on duty. You hear us talk about burglary prevention both on the show and in social media quite often. We investigate way too many cases that could have been prevented if folks simply locked their doors. We say lock it or lose it over and over, so much that it seems that the message gets lost. So our crime prevention unit is trying a different angle, one that hopefully will be more memorable. So pay attention, you won't want to miss any of the next segment. Well, we've been getting plagued with a huge increase in uh, car burglaries. Many of them are unlocked 
and some of them are uh, we're having windows broken too. You know, the commonality that we're seeing between all these, it's being done by a creature called Stuff Gruff. Ma'am, ma'am, it's a Stuff Gruff. We are working on it. It's, he's everywhere. Um, it, he will take anything that's not nailed down, but he likes shiny things. Yes, yes, they are real. They are real and we have one in Gainesville. All right. Due to deforestation, a lot of predators from the woodlands are making their way into the cities. We've got coyotes, foxes. Someone even said they saw a badger. I didn't even know we had badgers in Florida. But they're coming in, they're eating trash, and what you know it, this gruff, this stuff gruff, he comes in and he likes shiny stuff. I'm gonna look at this footage of this bicycle. I've seen really blurry images of it. This is the first good images I've seen of the stuff gruff. It was taken on a security camera actually over in one of our city parks. It's, that freaks me out. I'm gonna go ahead and queue it up, take a look at it, see if I can actually get a good look at what this thing actually is. Oh my God. <sighs> what does a gruff need a bike for? I don't know, but there it is. Stuff gruff is a creature of unknown origins. However, from the footage that we have and the sightings that we've, uh, that we've accumulated, we know that he's very furry. He's uh, about five, six, five, seven in stature, large feet has this beard that kind of protrudes down a little bit. Almost uh, almost like a like a Florida Yeti. He takes laptops, he takes cell phones, change. He loves spare change. He goes in and gets the change out of your cup holder. I don't know what he does with it. I don't know. I wouldn't buy from something that looked like this, but yeah, um, very big footy, but small. Most common for the stuff gruff is for him to burglarize vehicles. But we've noticed that his patterns have been changing and he's been branching out to burglarizing houses now. Many of the students that are coming back into town are realizing that they see footprints in their backyards and that the back of their houses have been broken into and some of their stuff has been missing. Um, Stuff Gruff loves uh, PlayStations and Xboxes and other gaming systems. The Stuff Gruff will steal anything if it's not nailed down to the ground. This is to include scooters and bicycles. A lot of people think that the Stuff Gruff only strikes at night. I'm here to tell you, it's not true. The Stuff Gruff doesn't care. The stuff Gruff strikes in the day and the nighttime. Wherever there may be a vehicle unlocked, wherever there may be, a laptop or a purse or wallet exposed on your passenger side uh, seat. <laughs> Stuff Gruff may be watching and he may strike. This is a map of all of our Stuff Gruff sightings. All over the place. He's everywhere. Best I can tell is that he likes to be around people but at a distance. I guess he watches us. He likes to be around the cars. That seems to be his favorite thing. I think it's because he knows we leave a lot of stuff in our cars and that a lot of us leave our cars unlocked. Uh, I, I think it's, we're just gonna have to change our behavior. It's like not feeding the bears at the park, you know? So that's our stuff gruff. Ernest, here's the plan we put together for addressing the stuff gruff issues we're having. We need to make sure all the officers have a copy of this our command staff, and we need to get something out to the community so they know what's going on. I'm gonna go work with Ben right now and getting a Facebook release put out. Awesome, that's a good idea. That'll get to a lot of folks. The Stuff Gruff is aware that the police are looking for him. He's always looking out for uh, different communities where there may be an increased patrol of uh, officers. So that's why we need you. We need the help of the citizens to keep a lookout and to call us when in case you see a Stuff Gruff. 
You don't know what the stuffed gruff is capable of. If you see one in your area, or if you see the stuffed gruff looking around your car or even in your car, please do not approach them. Call 911. We want to get the stuffed gruff off the streets. So let that be a lesson. While GPD Stuff Gruff is just a character, there are plenty of criminals like him out there. Please, make sure you take the time to secure your valuables and lock your home and car. Criminals like easy targets, so make sure you don't create one. And that wraps up this episode of Gainesville PD On Duty. Be sure to find us online on Facebook or Twitter or by visiting our website at GainesvillePD.org. You can learn more about the Gainesville Police Department and even watch previous episodes. We're always looking for new topics to share with you on the show, so please let us know what you'd like to see. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you again soon for another episode of Gainesville PD On Duty. I recognize the badge of my office as a symbol of public faith, and I accept it as public trust to be held, so long as I am true to the ethics of the police service. I will constantly strive to achieve these objectives and ideals, dedicating myself before God to my chosen profession, law enforcement. Burglars and robberies have become serious concerns in our city. This crime is referred to as a crime of opportunity because most criminals look for the path of least resistance. Protect yourself, don't become a target, lock your doors, and keep expensive items out of plain view. For crime prevention information, go to GainesvillePD.org or call the Gainesville Police Department's Crime Prevention Office at 334-2479. Protect yourself, don't become a target.